Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. She's driving now. <laughs> you know how it is if you're a parent, man. Wow. Kaylin's 16 and Stovey's 13 and, and Annabelle is 10. And they're at the age, they're just constantly having friends over to the house, which Carrie and I love. And one of the things I love to do for them is I love to cook. I've really gotten into to cooking. You know, I like to like get things they don't even know about. I like to make fires for them out on, on our patio and I'll get the marshmallows and, and I love to, to just cook for them. You know, you, you, many of you know that, that, that I'm a hunter. Oh yeah, that's right. Don't let this seersucker suit fool you. I got a camo outfit right in the green room, right? I'll, I'll go camo on you right now. So I love to do, like a lot of my game, like I, like I killed all these geese. That's right, I kill geese. I kill them, deal with it. I kill turkeys. See, y'all to thank God for people like me because I, 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 I allow you to eat Easter lunch and Thanksgiving dinner with a clean conscience. I do the dirty work for you. But I love taking these things, you know, and cooking them up and, and, and then serving it to the kids and, 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 and making the things that they like and all that. And I just love seeing them and their friends around. And, and they're not even thanking me. They're not even, they're, I can just hear them talking, oh, this is so good. Oh, this is so good. Oh, yeah, look at my dad. My dad made this. And I, I love, you know, when they go out to the fire and I have the marshmallows and everything for them. And I just see them having fun out there. And, and I even love it. I love like, dad, the fire's going out. Come on. Yeah. Woo. That's right. Dad's here <laughs> to raise the entertainment level. <laughs> I just love doing that for them and they're jo enjoying the food and, and, and everything like that. And, and now they've never asked me. But if they did ever ask me, Dad, why are, you, why are you doing this? Why are you cooking all this food? Why are you staying up late and doing these fires? Why, why are you doing this? You know what? I'm doing it for you. I'm, I'm not eating the marshmallows. I, I'm doing it for you. I just want to see you enjoy the food. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy your life. I'm, it's, it's all for you. Like, it's all for you. See, when God sent Jesus... It was all for you. Jesus didn't have to die on a cross. You know, what I'm trying to say is like, God's not lonely. He's self-sufficient. He's the almighty. He's the all-sufficient one. He didn't send Jesus just to prove a point, just to show everybody how great and perfect that he was. God sent Jesus, John 3, 16, it's for you. It's, it's all for you. It's just so that you could enjoy your life. Enjoy a relation. God wants you to taste of him. He wants you to taste. He wants you to see how good he is. No strings attached. No agenda. And that's why it's so hard for us as human beings to grasp God's love because all of our relationships there's a bit of an agenda. You go to work, there's an agenda. It's not saying people, aren't, it's just who we are in human nature. There's an agenda. Even parents and, and kids and all those things and so much of that, there is an agenda. There's, you know, okay, you do this and then I'll do this and there's agendas and things like that. And, you know, people saying this because they want you to do this and things like that. It, our, our human relationships, there's agendas involved. There's a catch, there's a hook. But with God, there's no agenda. He's totally for you. No strings attached. He's just Jesus died on the cross and rose again just for you. And God is the only person that is totally 100% Pure in being totally for you. There's no agenda, there's no catch. 
feel like many times people will kind of look at the outside of the church, and they're, they, they, or they think things like, well, man, if I, you know, if I give my life to Jesus, you, you know, I mean, what, what's, what's the catch? What's he going to make me do? Now I'm going to have to give money, and I mean, am I going to have to go on a mission trip, and am I going to fit in at this church, and the pastor's some crazy Cajun goose hunter. But we have all these things we think, well, how am I going to give up this or how am I going to do that? It's like, listen, that, that is not what a relationship with Jesus is, is all about. Forget all those things. That would be like before I ever cooked for my daughter and marshmallows in the fire and all that, if I, if I gave her, you know, one of those forks that holds the marshmallows and, and, and you know, I'm, it, or, or she saw one of those things that you roast the marshmallows on and she's like, What's that for? I'm not going to have to hold that, am I? What's, the, what's this and what, what, what's that for? No, none, none of that stuff matters. What matters is that you experience how awesome God's love for you is. It's for you. Once you taste of that, nothing else can compare. Well, if God loves me so much, Stovall, then why did he allow this to happen? And why did this tragedy happen? And why did this thing happen in my life? Listen, Jesus said in this world that there's going to be trouble. Don't take your, you know, don't measure God's love for you based on your current circumstances or your life circumstances, good or bad. Measure how much God loves you by what Christ did on the cross and that he rose again for you. It's for you. It's all for you. It shows us God's heart. So the, the second part of that scripture, now it makes so much sense. Okay, well, how can I experience this love? I want to know this incredible love. I want to meet this God who's totally just for me, wants to see me blessed. That's why Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and that life abundantly. So the second part of this scripture, it says, look, how do we experience this love? Here it is. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only son. So here's God's plan. Here's how we experience this great love. And here's the good news. God's plan is not a program. God's plan is a person. God's plan is Jesus. And here's the good news. There is no plan B. It's not complicated. There's no, there's no multiple choice here. All, all, all the, the, the religions of the world, there's not all these different pathways that you can choose to get to the same mountain. No, there is one God, there is one truth, there's only one name given under heaven by which men can be saved. And I'll tell you what, every other religion, they don't point to a relationship with a person, they point to a program. Pray this many times and do this and recite this and it's a program. Whenever man tries to reach up to heaven, he makes a program. It's man-made religion. It's full of agendas. But when God reached down from heaven to man, he brought Jesus. It's a relationship. It's because he loves you and he's for you and it's all for you. God's plan is not an agenda, it's not a program, it is a person, it is the Lord Jesus Christ and his tomb is empty on this Resurrection Sunday. I find it interesting, this verse of 25 words. Guess what word is right in the center? Son. He gave his only begotten son. In other words, Jesus is at the center. There's 12 words before. There's 12 words after. 
Jesus is at the center. What is 12? In, in Bible, uh, 12 is the number of government. He's the alpha, and the, he's the omega. Eternity past, eternity future, government. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's who was and is and is to come. He is the almighty, and he loves you, and he's for you. Can you give him a hand right now? And then the final part of the scripture, we see his heart, we see his plan, that's the person, Jesus. God just wants you to know him. He wants you to have a relationship with Jesus. Know him, experience him, taste the good things and the love that he has for your life. The things that bother you now, that trouble you now, they're not going to they're not going to have the same effect on you once you meet Jesus. You're going to realize that this world it's not your home anyway. Your permanent home is with him in heaven. And listen, in this life, this life is not fair. This life does not have equity, but I promise you there's coming a day when that's all going to end. There's coming a day when Jesus is going to come back. Equity will be in the next life. And Jesus Christ is going to come back, and there's going to be a time when he rules in love and righteousness. There will be an end to the pain and injustice of this world. And come on, you can start learning about that next Sunday. The end, the end series, okay? So get back here. But look at the final. Look, he gave his only son that whoever, everybody say whoever. Just put your name in there. Put your name in there, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is God's will. Stovall, what's God's will for me? Where does that start at the foundational level? That you believe in Jesus so that you can have everlasting life so you can experience this great love and this great God who is totally for you. No agenda, no hook, no catch, no expectations. Just want you to enjoy him and enjoy your life. It's his will for you to believe so that you can belong. And some of you have been running from God some of you have thought about a relationship with God like you think about it with other people. What's the catch? What am I going to have to do? What is my future going to look like? What's this agenda thing? Well, you know, what's the Christian agenda? There is no agenda. It's you just coming to Jesus for who you are and that, that word there, believe, once again, in our culture, you know, we, we have kind of that word believe, like, yeah, we believe, you know, this football team will win, or we believe this, we believe that. In, in the Greek, that word believe is more similar to our word for trust. And there's a difference between just kind of acknowledging in your head, yeah, I, I, I believe in Jesus. There's a difference between that and trusting Christ. It's kind of like this, if one of you just got your pilot's license, you know, you, and, and now you can fly a big jet. You're like, man, Stovall, man, I got my pilot's license. I, I can fly a big jet now. I've never flown this type of jet, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fly tomorrow. You believe I can do it? Yes, I, I believe you can do it. But if he asks, well, hey, good, you wanna ride with me? You wanna fly with me? No, you go on ahead. Get a few flights in you and then See, that's the difference between just believing from your head and trusting. He who believes in me, trust, surrenders their life. This person will not perish. This person will have everlasting life and experience the greatest love 
ever known from the greatest God.